and I like the name. Uh, this call is now being recorded. Uh, I, li I like this name, uh, Tuesday uh, group. So uh, I think, uh, OK, let me just share my screen. Please let me know if you're able to see it. Yeah, it's visible. Okay, perfect. So, is it visible to you in the full screen, please? Not yet. Not yet. Why I'm not able to show it in the full screen. I don't know why it's happening. Uh -huh. At my so end, it is showing us. Maybe you can do as a full entire screen share, sir. Okay. In that case, uh, which are the screens you are switching? That screen will be uh, we can view view it. Okay, I'll try that. Thank you. Okay, I think it's better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, so thank you everyone for inviting me. I'm Anurag, and uh, thank you for the kind introduction given. Uh, and there were words used like, I will be enlightening it and all that. So please don't expect all these big things. I'm just here to talk and discuss a few things. And you'll realize that you guys will also be doing some bit of talking and uh, introspection. And uh, there is nothing which I can teach. I think uh, learning is best uh, when somebody points out and something which we already know, but we were kind of ignoring it. So you'll realize that most of these things are those only. So I my task is just to remind you a few things which may be there or not there in your active brain. Okay, And the topic I chose today is team because lately, uh, and uh, uh, with with IIT, HTIC also, and other people also, we are trying to create a new team and working with new people and different people. So I think this concept of team and how a team should form and how a team should function uh, is becoming more and more important. And uh, I was talking to somebody, and they said, "Hey, uh, you know, in future, the most of the solutions." will be done by uh, multidisciplinary teams only. Why? Because uh, uh, individually in our teams in like, like medical field or engineering field or innovation or uh, law or whatever, we have achieved pretty good success. So whatever has to be solved by an individual uh, team or individual uh, silo of expertise, I think we have kind of sorted it out. Whatever the problems are left, I think that requires a multidisciplinary team to come in. So that is why this team concept is very important. And that is why I think I chose uh, this topic. So before we start to dive deep into the concept of team, let's do a fun warm up. Okay, I want you guys to open your chat box. I'm sure you all remember your name. Uh, so just remember your first name. And you need to prefix an uh, adjective which starts from the same letter as your name. OK? I've given some examples. Like if your name is Rashmi, you can be a relaxed Rashmi or ravishing Rashmi or something. right? So please, I want you to enter it and uh, on the chat box. So your name, but before that, you have to have an adjective which starts from the same letter. Let me see what all comes. OK. Oh, you can say English. I understand English and Hindi. So, Mithilesh, Meticulesh Mithilesh, OK, that is there. Uh, 
I think for this session, let's choose English as the primary language. So, yeah. Patient Padma, OK. Patience, yeah, we got that. <laughs> I hope it's not patient. Marvelous Mahesh, sure Shiva, very nice. Sure Shiva is very good. I think it's, uh, I'm sure uh, Shiva Kumar is oozing with uh, confidence when he is saying you're sure about things. Kind couple, that's pretty nice. Sincere Sondarya, anybody else? Relaxed? Uh, um, oh no, so Anban, you have to it start with A, something like that. Lovely Lena, perfect uh, Pata Biraman, sure Sribal, super Sribal, okay. Great. So why we did this is because jolly joy. Very good. Uh, in this in this very difficult world where we are living, awesome Abhishek, authentic Avinash, we somehow forget to appreciate ourselves. So even a moment of uh, activity which where we need to appreciate ourselves, I think we should not shy away from it, and uh, we should always find opportunities when we can praise ourselves and give a good adjectives to ourselves. So I think such uh, things are very important. So thank you all for joining in, in this. And let's move forward. Now, why we are having this kind of session where a doctor is coming and talking about something which is not medical, a group of engineers and other innovators and researchers, we're talking about something which may or may not affect us directly, right? Somehow, it is not the core skill which is required. So uh, the reason is because there's something called as a balcony view. You know, now balcony view says that uh, whenever we are working, let's say we are in a dance floor, we are very busy enjoying ourselves and dancing and everything. What we generally see from there is only few people around us, and uh, that is one perspective, which is very important perspective. But as soon as we let's say decide to move out of the dance floor and there's a view, there's a place called gallery where you sit on the top and just watch the dance floor below, you get a different perspective because you start seeing the overall lights, overall the effect of the music, uh, how others are dancing, how others are uh, using their space. So a lot of new perspectives come. So that is why once in a while, you should stop thinking about your work, your core work, and start analyzing yourself and different aspects of your life which is important. So that is why one reason why we chose to have a non-technical topic today. Uh, another thing which I want to emphasize before going in is uh, in your life, positive should always be greater than negative. Now it is said when you focus on what is working well in your life or work or profession or whatever, you get the energy to work on what is not working well. So typically, if anybody analyzes their life, out of, let's say, 100 things, there will be 60 to 70 things which are good in their life. And there will be, let's say, 10 to 20 to 30, which are not so good in life. But somehow we focus more on the negatives, and, and we keep cribbing about it. And that is why I think we don't have even the energy, because we are so drained out uh, because of the bad vibe or negativity, that we cannot solve even those problems, which may be solvable. So. Uh, Somebody has raised their hand, uh, Sastra. You want to say anything? No, sir. No, sir. Sorry. OK, no problem. Okay. No problem. So uh, I would encourage people to, if they want to have uh, share something, please raise your hand. We will take it immediately. Right? The other thing is uh, we want you to forget about everything which you do for, for the next 30, 40 minutes and be here uh, in fully. Also, why we need to uh, be in these kind of groups, because none of us is smart as all of us. Okay, So together, our combined intelligence, combined wisdom, combined experience is much more than individually any of us. Maybe even the smartest person in this group, uh, together, we can beat that person very easily. Right? So we should share we should talk we should listen to other people's story their mistakes their successes and that is another good way to learn in life so so this is the reason why we are having this session today 
Now, let's come to the core topic of team. Now, what is a team? Anybody wants to uh, share what they understand by a team and what is a team? Again, feel free to unmute and speak. If you feel like, or if you want to type in, you can type in. Anybody? Jolly Joy or Adjusting Unman, Lovely Lena. Anybody wants to answer that? Team is working together. Sri Goel said, uh, team is working together. Yes, team is has to work together. And you can see the picture, which very well uh, signifies that, that you have to come together. Unity, yes. Uh, unity. Unity, whenever I think of unity, there are two kind of thoughts are coming that is it important that whole team should be thinking the same thing, doing the same thing, or is saying something else? Is there any meter to scale smartness? Wow, very, very uh, good question that is there a meter to uh, scale smartness? Uh, I don't think, but we need to work on it. Maybe a next uh, research project or innovation project can be on that. Group of people working with coordination, yes. Group of people working to, uh, to, uh, together towards a common goal, OK? Making work easier, group of people working towards the same goal, sharing strength, completing each other, very good, Sandhya. Uh, Knowing plus and minus of team members, com compatibility, capabilities. Team is trained, efficient, appreciation, management. Excellent, Mithlesh. Uh, group of people who work for the same goal with individual strength. Group of people working on the same goal. Team is together, everyone achieves more. Excellent. So obviously, you people are already gurus. We, I don't need to teach you anything. Just uh, I'll give you one example of a team. Uh, Somehow, this example of Pandavas as a team, I'm very fascinated about that a group of five people, uh, and they were able to uh, you know, defeat a mighty empire and because, because of the common thing. So what make, made them an effective team and a good team is something we need to learn. And you will see that typical thing of team in many other examples also. And many of you have written this in some way. Uh, so yes, one thing is there has to be a common goal. Because of, uh, without a common goal, where everybody believes in it, you cannot uh, be a good team. If let's say there are five people in a team and everybody, somebody says, I want to excel, uh, I want to make this institution best in research. Somebody says, oh, uh, I want this to be the best hospital you know, in the, in the country. Somebody says, no, I want to bring in a lot of money here. The team can never be successful. You have to share uh, the vision. So all the Pandas, they had, they want, just wanted one thing. We want Hastinapur. We want this kingdom back because we have been humiliated because of this, whatever be the uh, driving force for that. Another important thing of this team is that they were not similar. If you analyze all the five pandas, they all were very different from each other. Now, this is one common mistake which we do, uh, that whenever, let's say, I have to start a project, I would reach out to my best friend because he's very similar to me. Okay, He might still be a doctor okay, or an engineer would say, OK, I have an engineering friend. Let's team up with that. And that is, I think, the mistake which we were doing for a very long time. And that is why we end up, ended up working in our own zones and not were, were not very good in collaborating with others. So the peculiar thing of a team should be that they all should have a different skill set, which should complement each other. Somebody has written in the group also that should be complementing to each other's strengths. Right? They have the, <laughs> OK. Uh, so, so that is the one thing. They have to have different skill sets so that they can complement each other and they can they should have a common vision. So that is the prerequisite of having a good team. Okay. So whenever you uh, whenever somebody comes to me asking, sir, we want to do this thing, 
I always say, okay, find your funders first. Okay. So for a project, let's say if you want a, somebody who's good in finances, somebody who's good in uh, social media or advertising, somebody's good in technical designing, somebody's good in, okay, let's say medical person to test the product. And somebody, let's say, who's a good researcher and a writer, because ultimately you need to write a report, you need to write a paper on it. So you need, let's say, five skill sets. So you need to find five people who excel in that uh, thing. And then you talk about the project to them. They should also feel the value of that project. And then I think you have a good team. Yeah. So this is about the team. Now, another important part of a team is a mentor. So, so always now somebody has written like Abhan, I think I written that Krishna's foul plays or uh, things, but yes, whatever. So there has to be a mentor who will guide you through, who will support you when needed. Uh, for any successful team, you need to have a good mentor with you. But who is a good mentor? A mentor, uh, the principle is, says that to inspire people, don't sh show them your superpower. Show them their superpower. And uh, many of the good mentors, you would also, if you think about a good mentor in your life, they would not be standing tall and saying, OK, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. But the real mentor are those who will say, OK, you have to believe in yourself. You can do this. And you have the power to do this. OK. Bhishma is a good mentor for Hastinapur. Yes, maybe in the opposite side. But yes, uh, he followed his dharma. He followed his values and, and his uh, promises, which, which is there. Now, let's come to more uh, technical things. There's something called as a flow channel. Okay, So if you see on the right side of the screen, you see uh, is, a, is a two by two graph. On one side, there are skills. And the other side is there are challenges. Okay, Now, uh, if we are stuck in a place uh, where the skill sets, our skill set are not are low, and the challenges are very high. Okay, that is generally in any entry point into any new organization, or whenever we change a organization which requires a different skill set. So we end up here, which is anxiety, and I'm sure we all have experienced this in our early phases of whatever job we do, and or training or student life everywhere we have faced this when we think that our skill sets are low and uh, the challenges are very high typically exam period is like that because from inside we believe that we don't know anything so our skill sets are kind of low and the challenge in front of the paper of the examination is very high uh, typically seen in job changes new uh, roles new responsibilities new machine comes in uh, new patient comes in new surgery everything is like that Slowly, with, with, when we keep working, our skill sets increase, and the same challenge is now doable. So if the, for the same level of challenge, it falls under the flow channel, which is the comfortable stage we are. And whenever we are in flow, uh, you would have felt some time that you were doing something for a very long time, and you're not feeling tired. You, you kind of are happy. Uh, and there are some, some things like, Personally, for me, puzzles are that kind of thing. I can spend hours and hours doing puzzles and still will not feel like time is passing by because somehow there I it's my comfort zone. Uh, so people will have different flow channels. Uh, so you have to find that flow, the right balance of what kind of challenges you have and what kind of skill set you have. Now, the other side is if you have too much of skill set, but you're not finding enough challenge to match that, then also you'll become bored with your job. So if you are stuck in that zone, you need to shift the challenge up and so that you can find the flow. This works for yourself. This also works for your team. So whenever there are people working with you, you should try to find whether this person is under anxiety or is getting bored or is in flow. If not, you can actually adjust the challenges. If you cannot adjust the challenges, you can include a training program, a workshop, or something so that the skills can be announced. Okay, Now, skills cannot be reduced. I am I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for that. So the only trick there is to challenge them with the new things. And typically, it happens. There'll be a very sharp person who will enter the team. 
and initially he'll, everything will be good but suddenly one fine day this this sharp guy who was doing very good with you will leave the job and move somewhere else because maybe he was getting bored of this job so you need to keep throwing them on a higher challenge so that they're not bored of this job okay so this is what for uh, the the flow is you know uh, so whenever you are in flow action and awareness merges right you are you are you know what you're doing at all times you know if you will do it in this way this will happen if you in that way it will this will happen so uh, you are very sure about what your actions are and what the impacts are your sense of self vanishes okay that is another characteristic of flow that somehow uh, the work becomes bigger than you you know you enjoy the work so much that uh, it's like it's like when you're playing for uh, your country that your personal name is not that much important your sense of time distorts uh, you will not even know that you have been working on this project for many years sometime and you will say oh i didn't realize that it has been already like 10 years into this job i just feel like i'm i'm excited every day when i come to job so that is the flow and it's magical to be uh, to experience this flow uh, in your job uh, whatever whatever you do all aspects of performance go through the roof obviously mental physical the performance of the whole team individually and combined it it is is a highest limit okay so please analyze the the team we are working in your colleagues you yourself your boss your juniors uh, and try to find out whether they are in anxiety phase or boredom phase or in the flow which is very important tool i think to keep the team together keep the team uh, performing uh, life okay so i'll just take a two uh, like 30 second kind of break in the sense if somebody wants to ask or give your comments uh, at this point anxiety to fail um, yeah yeah please i just have a question um sir is there any way of like you were telling to assess the team members or uh, the employees to hire like uh, we have high where do they fall in this uh, graph so is there any way <laughs> to assess them like do you have any okay um, so i think yeah. uh, broadly you will have a hint that you know this person is not performing now the what we generally see that this person is not performing okay the person not performing can be because of both the reasons it can be because of anxiety it can be because of boredom uh you need to maybe sit with that person okay and talk to that person that what is happening are you finding it difficult and if you analyze if you give time i'm sure you have you'll have the answer that either the person will find it very easy or will find it very difficult if you think that you're not able to judge that there are professional helps available for this there are people available there are tools available which we can share outside this uh, there are tools available to judge where do you fall thanks right sir uh, regarding challenges as as you age uh, your challenges won't be the same thing yeah uh, i mean your preferences obviously will change actually yeah so how do you i mean uh, with your experience how do you tackle it uh, so okay there are two things now uh, when we generally use this kind of program for a very specific role okay now as you have defined that as uh, our life changes our priorities changes our roles may also change so for individual role i would again apply this uh, graph okay i will not apply this graph overall for a person for example there's a person who who is an entrepreneur who has a startup also who goes and play tennis in evening in in his club okay and also maybe he's trying to learn guitar for okay. all the three things i will apply this graph separately okay so because so that i can know that where we need to tweak it maybe he's finding uh, guitar very challenging the startup work very easy and tennis maybe also he tennis is enjoying because he's in the flow so okay. maybe what we can do is if it's finding he's finding a guitar very challenging we'll uh, bring the le level down or maybe i'll introduce sir, him to a good coach who can help him 
yeah so one more question so take take uh, in case of an entrepreneur yeah uh, if if he fails in his business or something like that uh, what is his uh, future uh, regarding earning money and other things playing guitar and other things are different but uh, can he get back into a normal job uh, kind of roles or uh, i mean i just want to know yeah yeah perfect uh, so i think we need to understand that why this entrepreneur fails okay normally most of these entrepreneurs okay i am a outsider here so please forgive me of my ignorance uh, as i see entrepreneur is somebody who is technically very skilled he enters into a business okay now business is much more than a technical know how okay? okay now maybe he failed because he did not have enough skill set which is required for the uh, management or for commercial purposes right okay so there are two things i would advise him one is he should find a good team member who complements him in this skill set okay. okay okay maybe somebody who is an mba or somebody who has a good business sense somebody okay uh, or he himself get trained in these skill sets that is one way if he wants to proceed in the startup wala direction only okay sir now his Thank skill set his core skill set is always there so okay. he can always go back to the service industry and start doing a job i think nobody can snatch away that from him it's his comfort zone okay so basically if you see that kind of person is an a3 okay okay so either he can improve his skill set and go to a4 okay or he can just come down and bring down the challenge and come to a1 in both way he will be in flow okay but but will the company be interested in that person that is a question <laughs> okay again uh, again uh, because i uh, i'm not into this but i would i know one thing the other people are always interested in those people who are interested in themselves okay this is my short answer so if okay. you see value in yourself people will always see value in you okay sir okay thank you yeah uh hello sir uh, i have a question yes uh actually in while startup the fundraising is a very challenging path uh but when we provide a manpower amount and all in the beginning stage it was always tough in those times uh when we should uh, fire a team member or when we should assess what was the reason whether they are bored or when they are they stressed how to find that uh okay i think very practical question that you have a certain finite amount of money and uh, i know all this uh, good uh, moral things are good but somehow you have to choose that whether you should invest in because maybe at a later date he'll perform or somebody you can just fire him and have a new person who can perform from day one uh so that is i think uh, as a entrepreneur or as a business head you should have your vision clear are you here for a short game or a long game okay if you are here for short game means sometimes let's say you have a project which is time bound which is say ki in 2 years you have to ready a product and bring it to market whatever be it then i think the, the strategy of firing and changing and having a new person works okay but let's say if you are in a long game where your project is futuristic then i think you can invest in building up people then you have to work as a leader uh, and not as a boss so there's a difference in both so that would be my strategy thank you sir it was so useful okay there are other uh, hand raised please please unmute yourself i'm because the way i'm working i'm not able to see many mo most of the screen so please excuse me for that uh, just unmute yourself and start speaking please sir what is the difference between a boss and a leader okay okay uh okay boss uh boss would be one who is bothered about the the end goal of the team okay uh and he he may or may not think too much about uh the the personal growth of people working under him is a boss so he's uh, more of a dictatorial kind of person who lays down strict uh, order that you have to do this you have to do this you have to do this 
uh, that has a role. In the next slide, you will see we'll come to those those areas. Okay. And then there's a person who will handhold you, who believes in the idea that uh, if my team member will grow, the whole team will grow and the organization will also grow. So he works in that strategy, and he sets the targets uh, after discussion with people. He knows that which of the team member has what strength and how, what organization or he himself can do so that this person improves uh, and grows himself. So this is a kind of a difference between a team leader. And so a difference is a boss is somebody who has more followers, but who creates followers, whereas a leader is one who creates more leaders. So that is a one difference I always say. OK, so thank you. Uh, okay, boss always instructs and orders. Leaders are role models and look for strength. Yeah, so something like that. Anybody else wants to say anything? Thank you for these questions and. Uh, Sir, uh, one thing yeah. I just uh, I want to know that the which are the best books are available in the market for the entrepreneur entrepreneur, and uh, those who are the promising entrepreneur they have started their journey. Which are the best books are available? for the learning purpose. OK, so uh, what I will do is I will uh, email a broad as uh, some short list because the books are too many books are there. Uh, I think one of the most uh, uh, famous and popular segment of books these days are uh, uh, self-help group uh, books where leadership and management books are, I think, on a very high. So but I will share some books which I like personally, which either uh, or also, with some books which my friends recommend. Uh, I again, I'm, I must clarify, I'm not a leadership or a something guru, uh, but uh, I'm a simple doctor who, yes, talks and is interested in leadership concepts. We do run a leadership program for doctors and for medical uh, professionals, uh, which is called Mashal. Uh, so, so that is there. So, whatever brief understanding I have, I will share a list of books. Uh, and that can be shared to the group, right? Thank you, sir. So kind of. Yeah. OK, let's OK. Uh, still, there's a raise hand. Mahesh, uh, please. Yeah, sir. Uh, sir, one question. Uh, how to make the team members so accountable? Because many times uh, we face this uh, issue. Uh, though they are well qualified and um, uh, though we sponsors from the company perspective, like management uh, kind of uh, orientation or training or studies, sometimes we offer, but the, the the kind of mindset is very very tough. They again go back to the the the, the normal status of uh, like typical Indian uh, uh, old traditional operational mindset. How, how to change the it's a big task. Uh, yeah, I think good question. Uh, so this is a very, very important uh, uh, problem, which I think we everybody faces around. Uh, and I think uh, because most of us still stuck in that short term approach, ki, uh, let's get the work done. We shouldn't care about anything else. OK. And, uh, and uh, when we were employees, when we were juniors, let's say, we face the same thing for our bosses or our seniors that they don't care about us. They just want the work done. And the question we need to ask is when we are seniors, when we are at superior positions, are we taking care of the juniors or not? So the reason, according to me, why a, a subordinate or a junior would not uh, work in a proper way or an efficient way or a responsible way is maybe because they lack interest in that particular project. Okay, So a, it's senior's responsibility to uh, sit with the team and make them realize the importance of the work they are doing. Okay, That is one thing. Because for the boss or the, for the founder or the, uh, the entrepreneur head of any startup or any company or any project, he may believe in it, but do others believe in it or not? And you cannot just say, because I'm paying him, they should believe in it. This never happens. So I think that is one thing where we can work. The other thing is, individuals should also see their growth with the organization. 
So I think that is another place that how it is affecting them or benefiting them. So I think these are a few things where you can work. So as soon as the team concept will come in, uh, you'll start realizing that everybody is uh, talking more, everybody is working together more. And that is what you defined the team as. The team has to be together in all the things. If somebody is lagging behind and the team is not making efforts to pull him uh, forward, then the team concept of team is lost. Uh, that is what happens. Sir, one more question. Yeah. Uh, so since you're working in medical background, I just want to ask you this uh, question. Uh, uh, can a lab technician or someone who's doing a blood test or something like that, uh, can he become an entrepreneur if he aspires to become an entrepreneur? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, with with I mean, for an entrepreneur, degree doesn't matter. But mm -hmm. if he really wants to become an entrepreneur, considering our uh, Indian situation, uh, is it possible for him to run a very successful venture uh, venture or a, a, a company? Is it possible F starting from I mean being an individual and then building a team? Uh it is possible. I'm not saying it is not possible. Uh, but uh, again, he has to be very focused. He has to be very clear in his mind. Try, as soon as you are saying it, I had a clear example in my head that I know of a person who used to be, uh, uh, you know, first uh, used to be he used to run a farmer's shop, you know, outside my hospital. Okay. Then from there he started. Uh, uh, he basically came in contact with a product which he somehow liked. And uh, over a period of, I think, five or six years, now he is uh, kind of one of the partners of that company. And he's an entrepreneur now. We have seen him grow. We have seen him in various roles, like he used to first just be a shop owner. Then he started distributing medicines. So he used to come to us uh, for you know bulk orders and all those things. And uh, now he's, he represents a company. So that growth is there. So you have to be clear in your path. And okay, so that's why you said that people will value you if you value yourself. But if this okay. doubt is there in your head, I am just a lab technician. I cannot reach anywhere. Then obviously, you cannot reach anywhere. Okay. 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 Otherwise, people will support you. People will even work under you also. Okay. It's not like that, that doctors will never work under an entrepreneur who is a lab technician. OK? Okay. You you know the example of uh, uh, Steve Jobs, right? A university yeah. dropout uh, now hires the toppers of an university. So what's there? Oops. Oops. Thank you. OK, let's move ahead. Now, OK, this is an interesting uh, model. Again, uh, this is a borrowed model from Louis Yuan's work. There's a book called Five Cheers, Five Choices. Now. Uh, there are uh, so this what will it will describe is there are five kind of people or personalities which will be there in any organization any team and anything when i'll be describing them try to analyze where you are and where people around you are okay and as soon as you analyze that uh, you don't need to declare anything here but try to see that how you want to change that now if you ask me which is the best chair out of this it will be a difficult answer. It can be a giraffe, it can be a dolphin, even it can be a meerkat, okay? But it can't be one, okay? Because at different places, we need to bring out different personality type. Somewhere we have to be aggressive, somewhere we have to be defensive. So there is no one particular type which will be the best and all uh, solution, right? So what we need to see is whether we have the qualities of which all chairs and what we should do to develop those qualities, let's say. OK, so just uh, as we are going forward, just try to analyze what is there. The first is the red chair, or the jackal, we call it. Uh, jackal basically signifies attack chair. OK, so there's a quote by Mother Teresa, the more we judge people, the less time we have to love them. Okay? So the red chair is associated with jackal. It's a very clever animal. And he's always in opportunity to look out. No? We, we are always. Uh, looking for, okay, here we can make some profit, here I can hire him, here I can fire him. Uh, if something happens that this is the person, he did it wrong, he did the mistake, these are the people who will be shouting around, will misbehave, will blame, 
will write letters, uh, will gossip. Okay, these are the people who are in lookout of weaknesses around them, and how they can make profit or exploit their weakness. So these are some kind of people. Okay, uh, now you'll say, where we can use it? Sometimes we need to use very rarely, maybe when we need to actually uh, get the work done out of some people. You know, let's say the adversaries. Okay. Uh, what are adversaries again will come. Now, sometimes we use our policies, processes, and our experiences also. Sometimes uh, the bosses generally do it. They are in a high chair, so they will use their power to dictate you or to, to show you down and to dominate you. And they will not listen to your good ideas also sometimes, which is their bad. So this is a jackal. Okay? Just think about how many jackals are there in your team. And whether do you behave in a jackal's uh, manner sometimes maybe, but do you do that? If you do, try to minimize it to as less as possible, because you also know don't like when the other person is being a jackal, right? The second is the yellow chair, the hedgehog. Okay, if you've seen a hedgehog, hedgehog is a very defensive, very nice animal. But uh, and somehow the best thing about hedgehog is that hedgehog knows only one trick of defense that whatever happens he will roll down into a ball and will protect itself okay and hardly you will see a hedgehog attacking others but just in the defensive mode always the yellow chair is associated with hedgehog right now highest form of intelligence is the ability to observe yourself without judging so this person this animal knows that i have just one strength which are my these thorns and this is all i have okay so this is just opposite to the red chair. Okay, in the, this chair, there's a feeling of vulnerability. The, we judge ourselves. We have a very low self-esteem. We always feel we'll fail. People will reject us. There's a doubt. We procrastinate. We always feel we are in a victim mode, and uh, nobody likes us. No, I have no place in this department, and all that. So this is another chair, and I'm sure you will have people around you who who are similar to this kind of uh, personality. If they are there, or if you are there stuck in that role, try to find help and come out of it. OK, you need there is a lot of uh, material available on how to come out of this, this zone, how to be more positive, how to be more self uh, loving. Uh, and that can help you, uh, right? It will help you in some time, because let's say if you are up against somebody who is very formidable, whom you cannot do any harm to. Then at that place, obviously, you have to play the hedgehog. You have to just defend yourself. You have to just protect yourself. And maybe look for the opportunity to uh, find out a path and just overpass them. Okay. The third chair, uh, the third chair is a meerkat. Meerkat is known for waiting. They will just be standing in one place. And their heads will just popping here and there, uh, looking for uh, when to cross the road or when to uh, go to the other side or something like that. Okay, and uh, they're always confused that what should they do. Okay, so these are the, so they keep observing, and they observe so much, and they don't act. Is that kind of the personality is there? So very observant, very curious, very mindful. They're very vigilant, and uh, there's a acronym wait. So they are always thinking, what am I thinking? In this chair. You continuously are reflecting upon yourself, okay? And these judgmental phase, the procrastination phase is there. So uh, you give them a file or a project, they will keep uh, keep sitting on it, and they will not take any action, which is somehow very irritating sometimes. Whether you say yes or no, just say something. But these uh, kind of people are there. We'll keep waiting for the. I don't know what they are waiting for, but they'll keep they'll keep waiting. Uh, so they're seen as a very passive uh, people in the group, and uh, nobody likes them. But if you have a right approach to these people, and if you uh, go on a proper way to these people, they will give the observations which nobody would have observed, because they're very observant. They're very uh, uh, they're detailing. The sense of detailing is very highly there. So they also have value in the team. Uh, their observation, but in the right way. The second, the next is the blue chair or the dolphin. Now, dolphin, everybody knows, a very intelligent animal. 
why they are intelligent because one they have communication they have excellent communication network also they know their strengths so they know uh, where they have to be there they'll always be in a school or in a team uh, so so they know uh, their good things their abilities their weaknesses and they act according to that and uh, so so that is how it's there and knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom is what aristotle said and these this quote fits right on these people so uh, 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 these are very candid people who will be very good in giving feedbacks and opinions and uh, they are no good deal about themselves also okay they are in control always uh, they know in what situation they are there what they have to do they would be very good in taking decision whether they should be very proactive or laid back or defensive or what so they are uh, i would uh, uh, choose these kind of people to seek opinion from that what should i do in this certain situation uh, so these are dolphins and the last is is the giraffes now giraffes are the people uh, are the animal who have the lo longest neck biggest heart of all the land animals so they are the people who uh, who are known for their connect okay uh, and uh, so they have empathy they have compassion they will uh, reach out to uh, people in help uh, and they understand what others are going through uh, maybe it can harm themselves sometimes but they will always keep others first so this is a typical thing about giraffes so i don't like that man but i must get to know him better uh, so that maybe i like him this is what abraham lincoln said uh, depends again fits on the giraffes so these people are obviously very highly respected they might not do very good uh, financially or something but the respect they get is always very high so these are giraffes so uh, these are the five uh, kind of people uh, there are some chats uh, let me go so five kind of people uh, whom you will find in organizations uh, now yes i maybe on one side we say we should not judge people but now we are telling you tools how to judge people so uh, i think judging people is good because it will protect you from them or maybe you it will tell you that uh, who should be in your team what kind of people you need in your team now let's say if you are a giraffe by personality don't have more giraffes in your group okay maybe you need some uh, some jackal in your group maybe you need a dolphin in your group maybe you need a meerkat in your group because they all will have a different role and a different perspective and together you will form a very good pack you know so this is what this judgment will help you in that i am a very empathetic person typically what the instinct would be to find more empathetic people and then make a team what you will do then ultimately that you will give all the money to charity and you will sit at home and you will have nothing to do so so that is that is what i think you should do uh, okay let's see at the chat these quality will be there in every individual yes as i said in some proportion it will be there in everybody we all bring out one animal at some point and another animal at some point in front of our our friends we might be giraffes but in front of our customers we might not be our giraffe maybe we'll be dolphins okay so oh yes i think yes a uh, young entrepreneur is not young enough because they are already running a company so i don't think and then what uh, what i believe is that there will never be a shift phase that you know on this age or this phase you were not mature and now suddenly you are mature it will always be experiences so maybe initially your ability to judge might not be that accurate but slowly and slowly you will get there uh, so it's just uh, and and somehow what happens is whenever we talk about these thing into any group after some time there starts a joke around it okay oh there's a giraffe coming there's a you know dolphin coming so people start talking in that ways and that becomes a common code uh, between people so another uh, code which reminds uh, which i remind uh, i'm reminded of is something called as a sedu ratio right so i was uh, again in a workshop like this and somebody was uh, telling the story that in their organization everybody is like uska sedu kam hai his sedu is low his sedu is very high 
and all that. So this what is say do? So say do is actually my S A Y is say and D O do is say do. And uh, so person who speaks more and do less is a very high say do ratio person, and a per an opposite is a low say do ratio person. So it's a kind of a code a language. Okay, so high say do don't involve him. Okay, it's a low say do. Uh, you should have him in the team, something like that. Uh, okay, so again, uh, in which chair you would you like to sit? Anybody wants to make a choice? If you want to choose one chair, which chair you want to sit in? Green one. The green meerkat. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, no need to share. It's okay. Connect. Okay, giraffe. Everybody wants to be giraffe, but you know, it's very traumatic being a giraffe. I'll tell you again. Coming from a medico, it's very traumatic to to keep listening to people's problem, to keep helping them, uh, because it drains you also emotionally. It drains. It, it's it's very uh, very difficult being in that phase. Uh, okay, Bushkal says dolphin. Uh, yeah, dolphin is a good choice. Even giraffe is an excellent choice. But again, I will always have a dolphin around if I'm a giraffe, so that I can vent out my things. I can go and talk to this dolphin, who is very intelligent, very witty, and and uh, 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 cools me down whenever is there. So, yeah, detect perfect. Okay, let's move ahead. How much time we have? Oh, uh, I think we are almost. Uh, Close to our time. Uh, uh, I need uh, some clue uh, from the organizers that how much time we have. So maybe we can go ahead for another ten minutes. Sir. Ten minutes. Okay. Perfect. Yes. So, so okay. I'll I'll just talk about this concept and then maybe to, we'll just take few questions and we'll end that. Now, uh, in a team, basically there are many members. Okay, and. This is a great two by two again another two two by two graph uh, which we use. So on one side there's a level of trust and then on the other side is a level of agreement. Not trust uh, is not that I can trust him or not. Basically trust means if this person says this thing, this he will do it. Something like that. And level of agreement is uh, if I am doing something, will he agree with me or not? Okay, so they're two different things. Uh, there are some people who are always saying, ah, yes, sir, yes, sir, you are very right. Okay. So these are high agreement people. Whereas somebody who stands up to us, no, sir, I think we should again reconsider what you are saying. These are lower agreement people. Trust people is, he said, yes, sir, I will be there. I am I'm there with your team, but it doesn't come up, work. Okay. He will every time says, Ki, yes, I from this week, I, uh, I'll be there. My job will be there on time. I'll follow the deadlines, all that, but never happens. High is the opposite of it. So just keep that in mind. Now, one group of people will be uh, high trust, but low agreement. Okay, they might not agree with you, but you know that if he's saying that he he is there or with me or not there, me this is of high trust. These are your opponents. Okay, now you see. And and the people who have a low level of trust and low level of agreement are your adversaries. Okay. Now these two are different from each other. Okay. I always say adversary is like your enemy. Uh, they are of no use to you. So you have to reduce this box as less as possible. Okay. Opponents are actually uh, Okay, I'll give you an example. Like, for example, you're playing a uh, you know, table tennis or a badminton or a tennis match. If your opponent is very strong, you'll always be pushed to play better. Okay, so this is the importance of opponents. Opponents are not bad, opponents are kind of very useful because they will tell you the weaknesses of your program. They might not agree with you always, so it might it might hurt initially that what is there, or like. He always criticizes me, but if you think that he is of high trust value, okay. If you think he is a high trust value, you should listen to them. And if you are able to convert any one opponent into your ally, which will talk, it is a great success formula, you know, because they might tell you, okay, you need to your let's say your technical idea is very good, 
but maybe your financial idea is not very good. So if you listen to these people, they might give you some tips to improve on. Now somebody asked the question that what is, how do you differentiate and whom should we believe in? So for this, there's always like, again, in other words, there's a difference between criticism and difference and feedback. Okay. Criticism are those people who will always say Ki, you cannot do anything. You're a failure. You, uh, you should not do this, something like that. These are criticisms. And if you add criticism with something, how you can correct yourself, it becomes a feedback. Okay. So feedback would be like, uh, you know, your, this model is not right because, uh, maybe the, there's no, uh, uh, plan for scaling up. You don't have any plan that how will you scale up this, this, uh, this thing. So that's why this is not a good thing. So this is a feedback. So always see in the comments of people that whether there are corrective step is coming in or not, if it is not, it's a criticism, just ignore it. But if it, there is a corrective step coming in, then it's a feedback. Please listen to it very carefully. And these are the people you should always respect. These are all people you should always, uh, maybe you can become friend or not. I don't know, but you should always respect them. Okay. So these are your opponents and you would see to become a Nadal. I don't know how many Nadal fans are here to become a Nadal. You need a Djokovic, huh? you need a Federer. Otherwise, Nadal will not become great. So uh, that is the importance of opponents. Now, on the other side, if you see, if the level of agreement is high, that they always say, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, this is a beautiful model. This is the best project I have ever worked in. Uh, so, and the, but the trust is low. These are bedfellows. Again, these are of no use. Okay. But you need to keep them because they, they will be the crowds in your, in your things. They will be doing some work at least for you. So, but you should know that their opinion does not matter much. Normally we are uh, crowded around by these kind of people who are just saying yes, yes, yes to everything. And we feel that whatever we are doing is good. Uh, this is a, something we need to break away from. Then there's a big group of people who are fence sitters, okay, who will be sitting here on the, on the, on the fringe. Uh, just waiting for the right opportunity to come on your side. Okay. And uh, these people, if you push them too much to come to your side, then also they will go away. If you ignore them too much, then also they will go away. So you have to follow a very balanced strategy towards these people that how you can convert them and make them allies. Okay. And allies obviously are people who agree with your vision, your ideas, your project, and they have a high level of trust. So ultimately, your purpose should be to convert all these into your allies. Okay. So increase the level of trust for bedfellows, increase the level of agreement by talking to them, by finding out what the faults in, in why the disagreement is there. Uh, for bedfellows, maybe make them partners so that they will be trusting us. Uh, uh, they will be uh, more uh, careful about the project. Adversaries, it's very difficult to convert them into allies, frankly. Uh, most of the people will ad advise you that just ignore the adversaries. Okay, they will always be there, will be criticizing you, uh, whom you cannot trust, just leave them. Fence hitter is again, just wait and watch for these people. As they are waiting, you should also wait. They would come in. Okay, so this is, uh, I think, it. Uh, as the time is short, we ha I have a few more slides, but. Uh, Maybe some other time. I will end with this thing. Uh, how it's, a, it's about empathy, basically. So this is a photo of Raman Maharshi. Somebody asked them, you know, ki, uh, Maharshi, how do we differentiate that? Uh, you know, how we should decide that uh, we should treat people whom we know and the other people. So he said, who are others? There are no others. And that's how we should treat people as there are no others. Everybody is, is a family and they're together. Right. So, so this is it. I'm open to again, questions for a few more minutes and we can take them. Okay. Uh, in the chat box, we have a few things whom we should believe in. We already answered. Is it good to oppose a leader or a boss? Uh, okay. Again, because it's in two parts. 
boss, I would not say it's a good idea to oppose because if you think that he's a boss like personality, they will not like to, uh, sorry for that, not like to uh, hear anything opposing to them. But I think a mentor or a leader would be very interested and uh, in knowing that uh, that you are opposing him because then you will become an opponent okay and any good leader any sane leader any sane senior would be very respectful to your uh, your critiques or comments critiques and opponents uh, is the best friend uh, yes certainly best friend i don't know because uh, again the same thing i cannot imagine djokovic and nadal hanging out together but they respect each other immensely. So that's an example. We may not be the best friends. Allies are the best friends, typically. But uh, you should respect them. That's the thing. Uh, all in all, trustworthy team is important. Yes, trust is the more important than agreement. So that is the, uh, the mantra. For a startup, uh, more than quality is money is more important. I think there's no option to choose people like this. IITNs might be interested in startups, might not be interested in startups. Uh, I money uh, again the simple thing in short term maybe in long term money always come if there's a good team uh, so benefit uh, project but opportunity is less uh, this was different and wonderful session thank you thank you thank you uh, any uh, okay there's a raise hand Sondaria please Sandhya, could you please unmute yourself? I think by mistake, she has raised the hand. Okay, maybe. So, so that's all. Uh, I would say thank you. Uh, I think it was fun from for me also. Uh, over to the organizers. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. In fact, uh, so uh, whatever I said in the beginning, that it is really an insightful talk, I should say again, the reason that uh, I am taking two important messages from this particular session that you, one is basically the self-appreciation that you actually wonderfully made every participants to uh, self-appreciate themselves in the beginning itself. Thank you for that. And also, I understand that to know ourselves as well as the team members is very important. Because that would potentially make every people or even it have the capacity to empower the complete team members. If we really know what exactly that we are, what are all the capacity building which is required. So that would definitely help the team members to meet the challenges. In fact, the startup journey, as you said rightly, that there are a lot of risks that they have to face together to achieve a particular goal for which I believe definitely the self-appreciation as well as this know ourselves is really a two important mantra that everyone should understand so that that will facilitate us to get a lot of empowerment to meet all the challenges. So it's really a wonderful talk, sir. wonderful session. Yeah, so thank we all you. thoroughly enjoyed. You, you rightly said, uh, I think uh, most of the leadership, somebody was asking about leadership books, most of the leadership book will tell you, teach you only one thing, that to be a good leader, you have to be yourself. So you have to know yourself and just be yourself. Uh, it may not be like the whole 6 billion people will never follow you. But people who uh, match what you believe in will always follow you. So just be yourself. And Sondari, I think, has asked a question on chat. So yes, I think you answered yourself. I think it, there always has to be balance of experience and, uh, and pressures. That's the right approach. OK, perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much for this yes. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Doctor, for sharing your knowledge with our startups and hope the startups have gained the knowledge. So, just I want to check with you, Doctor. As a practice, we used to upload our session videos in our YouTube channel. Hope that is fine with you. Oh yes, yes, certainly you can do that. Thank you, Doctor, and thank even you, ma'am. For... Slides, yeah, even the slides, if possible, that. I I can mail it to you. Yeah, I will mail it. To you. Sir, uh, one thing I, I I want to just share with HTIC and to you, sir. It's a very wonderful session, and uh, it will be very uh, great for us if we, if it will be arranged again for something in a different matter, where you can uh, we we will be coordinate with you and we can get some information, some knowledge from your end. 
it will be a very appreciated matter for us sir. thank you certainly i think if we can do that yeah Shaundarya have some questions. Yes. Uh, hello, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Ah, uh, uh, yes, sir. Actually, uh, while we hiring a uh, thing, uh, whether we should uh, hire people who can understand our vision and share, and uh, uh, they also have similar, I mean, emotional connect to our vision, uh, but though they don't have much experience, uh, we should hire them. or like uh, people uh, uh, they have a very skill set uh, technical background but they don't connect with our vision should we should i choose him uh, uh, okay so i think uh, having the shared vision is very important skills can be taught okay experience can be given vision uh, if it is not clicking to them it will never click okay it's like that so maybe i will keep these people as fence sitters and maybe in future they might realize the importance of the vision and they will come into your team uh i think i will still invest in people uh, who share the vision with me thank you sir thank you so much sir thank sir, you can we connect you. with you if we have any other doubts I have, yeah i have given my email uh, in the chat box uh, okay. you can just check it otherwise i'm there in social media as uh, mostly if you search and rock dr and rock mr you will find it otherwise you. Uh, you can reach out on email then thank you sir thank you so much okay thank you bye bye and have a good evening bye bye thank, thank you sir thank you ma'am for hosting the session ma'am thank you ma'am ma and thank you participants for joining the session one question to hsc yes yes and yes and but uh, is is this knowledge tuesday will be happening every tuesday or uh, it's it's no. only okay okay no 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 uh, the once in a three months Okay, 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 ma'am. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks a lot for. Telling. May I know the YouTube uh, link? Please, I will share the YouTube link in the chat box. Yes. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you, participants, for joining the session. Have a good day. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.